Welcome to St. Anne and St. Joseph Online Mass. We're so glad you're joining us today. The music for today's Mass can be found in the bulletin on our website, growinholiness.org. Before Mass begins, we invite you to take a moment to quiet yourself and prepare yourself for the sacred mysteries we are about to celebrate.
us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor, and she extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
crazy schemes I was trying to run out of our family house. And this gospel always made a lot of sense to me. The parable of Jesus in today's gospel always hit home. Because as a little kid, I was not one to put money in a savings account, but rather I wanted to invest, like the gospel seems to be telling us. I wanted to double my money, make lots of money, and that would bring me happiness. That was my plan as a little six-year-old saint in Toledo, Ohio. God bless my parents again. But as we think about and reflect upon this gospel, and it's a parable that I'm pretty sure we as Catholics can all probably recite, we're all familiar with, and as we reflect upon it, I think it has a lot of meanings to us. What means the most to me, especially recently, if we reflect upon this, is the investment that God has made in you and me. The investments as children of God that God has placed in us. If you think about the moment of creation when life begins in each of us, God has destined the plan for each of us. Now certainly he's given us free will. God's not forcing us on certain choices or how to act. Rather, God inspires us and equips us and calls us, and yet we know we don't always follow that path. And yet, if we're honest, we know God has given us certain gifts, certain talents, certain abilities. I think of the parishioners who are, have this God-given gift for voice and singing, and how they use that gift to give glory and honor to God through the music ministry. I think of people who are good with the trades and with their hands, and who volunteer in different projects around the church, churches. We could go on and on with practical ways that people recognize their gifts and talents here in church and how they respond by putting it into practice. Using that investment that God had placed in them to multiply and bring about good. I think we have to look at this not just in the church sense, how we're using our gifts and talents here in God's house, but we need to look at the bigger picture. That if we look in the mirror, if we do true self-examination, we can see different gifts and abilities all of us have been given by God. And the challenge is, what have we done with that? How have we responded to that investment? Have we borne fruit in our lives? Have we given God glory and honor by how we live? Have we built up God's kingdom and brought people to Jesus? Or have we squandered that investment, kept it to ourselves, buried it, and was only concerned about ourselves? It's scary to think about, but throughout the month of November, all the gospel readings and all the readings, in a sense, call us to reflect upon our own mortality. They challenge us to look at ourselves and to see how we're doing at responding to that call. Today's gospel, how are we doing at responding with the investment God has made in you and me? What fruit have we borne? Have we brought people closer to Christ? Have we shared Christ's glory? Have we shared Christ's compassion? Have we shared God's forgiveness? When people look at us, do they see a faithful disciple of the Lord? A person of joy and happiness, a person of love and service, a person of compassion and mercy. What have we done with the investment God has placed in us? There's a common saying in our church that we're called to extraordinary things, that we're called to be extraordinary men and women, that we're called to be saints. And this is only the case because God has made an investment in us. He has breathed life into us. He has breathed the gift of faith. He has breathed the gifts and talents. He has breathed the temperaments. He has created us in his own image and likeness. And he has equipped us for greatness in our lives. So as we pause and reflect, have we responded? Have we brought about greatness? Have we brought about Christ and his presence? Have we brought about the joy that comes from following Jesus Christ? What kind of fruit have we borne in our lives? As I said, the readings this whole month remind us of our mortality, remind us of our judgment, that just like in the parable, the three individuals had to give a response, 
and turn in the fruits of their labors, so too one day we will have to do the same. And it's very clear the options that Christ will say. And so my prayer for all of us is that we can be like the first two who bore fruit, who took the Lord's investments and did great things, who multiplied the gifts, that we too can be told one day, well done, my good and faithful servant. I will give you great responsibilities. Come and share your master's joy. This week, as we go about another week, let us reflect upon those talents, those gifts, those investments God has made into us. And let's reflect upon the fruits we have, or maybe we haven't borne, by using them. We know the response we want from God. We know we want to be good and faithful servants. And we know we want to share in the joy of God. And so we must respond and bear that joy and that service and that love and that compassion in our lives. To bring about the fruits of the investment God has made in us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we have been created for extraordinary things, to do extraordinary things, and to bring about extraordinary things in this world. All for the goal of experiencing the extraordinary things God has awaiting for us in the world to come. Have we responded? What have we done with the investment? Have we brought about fruit in our lives? Let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became him. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic. Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust and confidence in our Heavenly Father, let us place our needs before Him. For all leaders, political and religious, that they will be open to the Holy Spirit so that they will work together for peace and unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering and the lonely, that they may be comforted by the consoling presence of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the grace this week to use the unique talents that God has given to us to bring glory to his name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of the intentions inscribed in our book of intentions and for those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. 
respond to God's call to serve his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the faithfully departed, that they may see the glory of God and rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we place these needs before you and we ask that you grant them according to your holy will. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
join us in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O oh Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have just one announcement this weekend. Our Moms Group will be hosting a Nerf War on Saturday, November 21st at 1.30 p.m. at Bishop Hoffman Hall. If you and your kids are up for a good battle, please call the St. Joseph Parish office to RSVP. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of 